Okay, next one. Squats, deadlifter. Squats <laughs> will make your butt big. Uh, okay, so there's a lot more better ways to make your butt big than a squat. La. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Hello again everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Deep Culture Podcast. This is Fatli, your host, and I hope you guys are doing well at home. Today with me, I have a couple of very interesting guests who I, I invited to come on because it all began for me a couple of months ago during Circuit Breaker when I was thinking, you know, we can't go out except to exercise. And I was thinking to myself like, hey, if the only way to go out is to exercise, then I must as well make the most out of it. And I must as well, you know, get as fit as possible. But then I faced some trouble because I was wondering to myself, what's the right regime? What's the kind of diet that I need? What's the kind of strength training that I need? And all these questions started to come in. And luckily over the period of this uh, podcast, uh, I've been introduced to these guests uh, who are going to share with us a little bit more about what personal training can do for you in terms of fitness and how you can lead a healthy life, right? So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Jazli. Hey, Kaisen. what's up, man? Hey, guys. All, both from Body Engineers to the Deep Culture Podcast. Welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I get it right. wrong? <laughs> did I get it right? Was it so far okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the podcast, guys. How are you guys Thank doing? Thank you. Um, we're doing good. We just finished uh, training our clients today, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. For, for me, I had, I had jujitsu class just now. Like, okay. I went to learn jujitsu. Who oh, is your own class? Yeah. No, no, I learned jujitsu, not uh, like teach jujitsu. Right, right, right. Okay. Very cool. So you guys are heavily involved in the fitness industry, right? Is this your full-time jobs? Yes, yeah. it's our full-time job. Nice. How long have you guys been doing this? Um, are you asking personal training or body engineers? Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, for body engineers, we have been doing it for about two years. That's okay. when we are incorporated. So I was freelancing one year before that. And I it think, no, I think. In total, in the fitness industry, I've been in for about five years. Five years? Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Same, same goes for me. Same goes for me. So I've, I've been... Um, actually, before I started uh, even like joining a big box gym, right, right? I went to do a little bit of freelance personal training myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, and after that, I went to California Fitness after that. So, uh, roughly about five years as well. Oh, so around the same time period? E- Around the same time period. Do you guys know each other before that? No, no. not at all. No. Oh, okay. So how did you guys meet? That's the first question. I mean, you, since you guys started up Body Engineers. <laughs> okay. Uh, both of us meet during um, when we were working at California yeah. Fitness as personal trainers. Okay. So I was his junior and then he was my junior. Uh, he was a junior <laughs> no, junior. Was a, he was yeah. a junior junior. <laughs> <laughs> So right, like right. Um, technically at a point of time we were surveying the floor more more towards finding clients rather than training clients because we were pretty new. Right. Mm. Um, but then I think in the middle you left, right? Yeah, I left. Uh, so he, I, sorry, I <laughs> didn't. I didn't really like the environment there. Like, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> then I continued all the way until California closed down. Mm. Mm. Okay, and that's when you guys decided to start up Body Engineers. Uh, no, no, actually we had a long break <laughs> in between, man. Yeah, a long break of doing our own stuff. So after California closed down, um, I went on a two backpacking trip, one month in Japan and one month in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So um, I was thinking whether I want to continue inside the fitness line as well, right? Because uh, first thing first, I got to think about the ethical aspect. Ethical, okay. Ethical aspect. Uh, so the thing is, California was very focused on sales mm. and mm. not more on like the extra learning towards uh, clients or even giving the most value of them. Right, right. So um, there, sometimes people have the culture of hard selling and I think that's what, yeah, uh, that's, that's why <laughs> Kaiten left yeah, because of the um, ethical issue wise. Okay, okay. So um, that's where we, I thought that maybe we, uh, we as personal trainer could actually do better mm. to get um, our clients to another next level of enjoying fitness right. rather than trapping them to another gigantic package, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I get you, yeah. I get you. I mean, I myself was one of the, I won't say victims, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, was, I, I did sign up for a package uh, over in another gym uh, back at about two years ago. And then same thing as well. It's like you sign on and then after that, I don't, 
Okay, I don't really know. Am I allowed to say this? Should it? Yeah, just, we can edit out. Uh. Yeah, just say it, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's tough because it's like I sometimes I feel like when I ask them questions, the the the, the answers that they give doesn't really help me in a mm. way. It's more like you know, how do I? You're here for a session. We do one hour with you, and then that's it. Right. Right. There's no real like uh, improvement or growth as a human being in, in terms of health and fitness and all that. So, is that what you guys are targeting towards? What? Okay. So first thing first, I uh, gotta understand the context. What do you mean? You have to go deeper. Oh, deeper. Yeah. Um. Okay. So like, you know, for me, when I come, when it comes to personal training, I have to look. In, I look at it from the point of view of somebody is there for me if I need help in terms of mm. anything to do with my fitness. Mm. Right. So I I won't say like after midnight or anything, but as long <laughs> as. It, <laughs> As long as it's within reasonable hours within the day, if I text you or I need help in terms of diet or fitness exercises, you're there. Mm. Right. Is that what fi- uh, personal training? Component? Yeah. Yes. We are, uh, you want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, we are there most of the time except uh, like what you mentioned, maybe in the middle of the night, maybe 2, 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I, I still might be awake because I'm mostly work, doing my work at, during that point of time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we... we not only uh, help with, you know, just one one hour workout sessions, right. but behind we plan the programs, mm. uh, be it nutrition or you know or fitness, right. and then any advice on maybe some uh, cheat sheet on making your diet better, right. like more comfortable than okay. uh, making it suck so much, like eating chicken <laughs> breast and broccoli every day. <laughs> chicken breast yeah. and broccoli, okay. Yeah. We'll go into that later. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. yeah. <clears throat> so what you guys are trying to do is that basically you are not looking at it from a sales point of view, but more as a personal touch to the clients. Is that uh, one of the things? As a personal trainer, the, the, the most important thing is that we need to guide our clients uh, fitness from point A to point B. Hmm. And then um, in order to do that, sometimes we have uh, very difficult people. Okay, for example, um, we can have people over 100 kilos hmm. who's been decades very unfit like 20 years right. 30 years even sometimes mm. okay. very unfit and then uh, you think you can just give them the information and they'll get fit mm. I <laughs> don't honestly it's yeah. been decades and if they wanted to find the information most likely within that 30 years they've been trying to find the information over online right. whether it's false whether it's um, whether they do their due diligence to check or not whether it's right or not that's another issue right. but most importantly it comes psychologically okay psychologically yeah so like um their mental habits whether they have binge eating habits mm. or whether they have relapses the snacks at night also is mm. that one of the factors uh snacks at night you can also get your six pack with snacks at night man really I yeah. bet maybe healthy snacks then help mm. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> okay shoot, we're, shoot, we're shoot. diving into nutrition now is it? <laughs> okay so actually uh <laughs> you know you think about this way if you consume let's say 200 calories during the day right. versus you consume 200 calories at night, right? Yeah. The 200 calories don't magically become like 400 calories at okay. night, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I would say meal timing is based on personal preference. Okay. So if you, if you can eat more during the day or you need to eat more during the day, then you eat more during the day. But if you, some of my clients, they don't have appetite during the day. Hmm. So they can only consume food at night. Right. So I say, okay, go ahead, consume food at night. Yeah. So there's no real disadvantage about eating at night or in the day? Mm, I wouldn't say... It depends on also your, your day. Yeah. What, what is it like? So mm. let me, maybe uh, people would like to consume food before they start their workout. Right. So it gives them like, you know, more energy to work out. Yeah. Right? Versus maybe uh, people who, you know, when they wake up, they can't uh, consume food. Yeah. But I normally get them to just get a, a little something maybe Banana just uh, something. liquid or something just to get their yeah, energy up right to start the workout yeah okay mm. very cool <laughs> we've dived really deep into this uh <laughs> in fact there was a let- certain uh, introductions that I've, I've missed out i realized sorry <laughs> so firstly i just also want to give a shout out to legacy interiors for lending us their office once again to shoot this podcast so a big thank you legacy interiors uh shout out sufi shout out Fidaos. thank you sufi <laughs> and uh also so now let's get personal first so maybe Jasli you want to start off by sharing a bit more about you yeah so what's your background like in terms of fitness I mean we know you went to California fitness but what is it about fitness that really interests you okay so um, 
in my life I was a fat kid. Okay. But at the same time, I've been always doing <laughs> fitness. Mm. So like um, all my CCAs of fitness, I was in a rugby team, um, competing with uh, inter schools. Mm. Um, I did Muay Thai for eight years. Um, I learned Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and um, mixed martial arts during my poly days. Right. Um, and I was also a close combat instructor in the army. So that was my first take of experience in teaching people how to do something physical. Okay. Um, and. At the point of time, I was studying aerospace electronics, mm. which is a totally different line. But um, <laughs> the reason why I want to go into it is more superficial reason. So more of like, um, I want to be pilot so I can press the autopilot button and play a PSP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's everyone's dream, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the most laziest. It's just the hard work at the initial point. But um, I think during the NS time, like, I feel very dumb. So like, I like to kind of challenge myself in a way where... Mm. Instead of choosing in the canteen what you're going to eat, apple or pear, more, um, I wanted to try out, um, I did a part-time study. Okay. So um, I did sports science in, uh, bachelor's in sports science mm -hmm. during my NS days uh -huh. just to upgrade myself. <laughs> and it was more of a random thought because maybe it could be interesting kind of thing. Yeah. So um, that's what dropped me into personal training industry because uh, I'm a huge science in terms of fitness ah, so okay. um i would learn how every single muscle work um what are the even the individual names of the muscles and yeah. um, <clears throat> how certain mechanics so um at that point of time it was more relevant towards my mixed martial art how to throw a punch harder how do you <laughs> twist the velocity and all this kind of stuff <laughs> like when you have that camera and that 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 uh vo2 mask on and everything like that, and the finger prick <laughs> just to check how much oxygen is in your blood all these kind of things, uh, <laughs> I love it. I really love it. I love to dive deep into it. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so that <laughs> what makes me really interested into fitness. Okay. Um, aside from just training myself, I really like to know how something works. Mm. That's the engineering background, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how body engineers is name as well. It's like, mm. yeah, since we're changing people's life, then, okay... Maybe I used to study engineering. So like, how, how what do we match together? <laughs> Body engineers. Yeah, that's the right word. Yeah. It's a really catchy name, I have to say, man. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, no problem, man. Half and man, half machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Terminator kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should change our motto. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. And also, uh, if I'm not wrong, you're now into powerlifting. Deadlifting. So, um... Two years ago, I was uh, I competed in powerlifting, uh. mm. but at that point of time, even learning the mechanics of it, um, I realized that there's a lot of things that's lacking. Right. Um, in terms of fitness knowledge wise, uh. so I've dived really, really deep on how to actually get people into strength. So what I love about powerlifting is that uh, first thing first, you don't have to diet. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> sounds yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds good. <laughs> and um, I like high pressure sports. So if I mm. um, realize since last time, um, I like rugby because of the high pressure itself. If you get a ball, you have to run. If not, you just get tackled mm. or yeah. you're going to die. Um, <laughs> for Muay Thai wise, um, if you don't block or if you don't take action, then technically you just get punched in the face. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, the next one is powerlifting. It gives me the adrenaline and thrill to actually get under the bar and lift uh, heavyweight with proper form, of course. Mm. Yeah, um, lift really, really heavyweight and making like uh, sure that you can actually achieve more than uh, what you are. Right. So those numbers are always very, very apparent when you actually hit um, your uh, your um, target. So right. how I go into powerlifting is more of like. In the past, I always thought that you need steroids to actually... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll talk about this and another one also. But you always need steroids to actually carry really, really heavy. Yeah. Until I actually met a guy who is a real powerlifter and then he was uh, squatting four plates wow. alone. Usually people like three plates, whoa, you need a squat and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Like He's uh, super and I was like, <laughs> what do you have in you? And like, are you another machine? Half yeah. man, half man. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I dive down to the science of um, how to actually increase strength for people. Mm. So 
um, learning on how your central nervous system work. Right. So there's this nerve that actually fire up and get stronger whenever you lift up, lift some stuff. Okay. And um, from there, I broke my limits lifting about two times my body weight, about 140, 200, 220 wow. kilos. And um, I feel really achieved. Uh, and mm. I realized that most, um, I realized that actually people can do it. It's just whether you want to do it in a safe manner and a structured manner. Okay. Mm. Very interesting. I have a lot of questions on deadlifts, but uh, <laughs> I also want, want to go to Kaitsen first. After go, this, right. And then we can shoot the questions afterwards. Hey, uh, he's on the dieting part. <laughs> <laughs> dieting part. All right. But I don't diet like three, uh, three six, five days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us more, man. What, so what do you do? And why, why don't you diet traditionally? <laughs> okay, so uh, basically, you know, pretty much like jazz, right? I started uh, my... Basically, fitness uh, habits, you know, or basically why I want to join personal training right. in the army. Um, because back then, I uh, basically got the best PT during my, in my unit. Okay. Yeah, so I want to help like the rest of my friends to mm. get their goal. Yeah, yeah, so we can, you know, go for smoke breaks together. <laughs> <laughs> and, then ah. it, yeah, and then it become an, an interest. Mm. So um, basically, I like, oh. Actually, this, you know, this thing actually works, right? Right. Yeah, so it becomes like, you know, when you have a sense of achievement, right? Mm. And then you just want to do more. Yeah. So I explore like different, many different workout programs myself and also tried um, many different diets myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, on some diets, uh, I even puked. Yeah, really? because I remember there was one, uh, I watched this bodybuilder, I forgot, Kylie Muscle. Right? Kylie Muscle, uh, right? Kylie Muscle, yeah. <laughs> so he that. makes like tuna and like Maggi noodles and like mayonnaise or something like that, right? What? <laughs> yeah, just to keep the calories, you know. Okay. Like I had to hit 4,000 plus calories that time. Yeah, because army, you know, the activity level was right. a lot. Yeah. So I, I add that and I, I puke. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to try to eat it again and I was like, oh no, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see, okay. So that's how you all got started for you. Yeah. And now, I also heard that you're taking part in... Uh, WNBF, is it? So, uh, yeah. What does that stand for? World's Natural um, Bodybuilding Federation, yeah. So what's that about? So last year, well, probably, I think exactly <laughs> the same, same date as it. Oh, is it? Probably. <laughs> like early September, if I don't remember wrongly. Okay. Yeah, so I went to this uh, show to compete hmm. because, you know, there are... Enhanced athletes versus, you know, uh, natural athletes. So people who take PEDs, which is your uh, performance enhancement drug, like your steroids and stuff like that. Right. And um, it makes a fair level of playing field for the natural athletes to compete. Okay. Mm. So I, I went there uh, for an experience. Mm -hmm. I competed with like the international athletes on my first competition. <laughs> that was your first? Yeah, that was my first Damn, competition. Damn, yeah. okay. <laughs> and I realized I had a lot of uh, things to improve on basically. Mm. Yeah. So it was an eye opener. Yeah, it was an eye opener, and I also went for the uh, physic round table by I think Dr. Eric Holmes and uh, some other famous coaches, okay. uh, such as your IFBB Pro uh, Laura Collins and stuff mm. like that. And I realized, you know, there are different ways to actually approach different strategies to approach like contest prep uh, mm. dieting. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Did you place in that competition? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> but it was a good experience. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Good... I mean, the fact that it's international as well, right? Yeah. So that must have been great. It's like, literally, you can see... How, how many percent do you actually went down to? Uh? I, I think I dropped to 6% body fat. Yeah. 6%? Yeah, yeah. 6%. It was you like... can see his face like really sharp. Like and the face sunken in, you know. Like, <laughs> like I'm deep malnutrition or something <laughs> six percent i mean the closest i've ever been i think was about 16 percent 16 yours is like six <laughs> percent it, it was a torture to get there yeah it was yeah. a torture okay we can dive in more into that. Like, <laughs> these, these are really interesting things like i have a lot of questions on deadlifts i have a lot of questions on what do you call it or, uh organic is it like uh, natural natural natural, natural. Bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah so those are really interesting but let's go abroad first so we started with body engineer that was something that you guys felt like uh, there's a missing something missing in the market. You don't want to be selling. You want to be helping somebody, right? Yes. And how has it been so far for you guys? How long has it been again since uh, Bodybuilding uh, started? Two years. Two years. Two years. 2018. <coughs> 2018 September. 
Oh, exactly oh. two years. Yeah, <laughs> two years, two years. Exactly two years. Happy anniversary, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> so, how has it been over the last two years? You know, um, the funny thing in terms of um, being a personal trainer, especially, you learn more when you're outside and doing on your own, because mm. you realize that you can actually do things on your own, right. and um, you have more time to focus on the learning wise, mm-hmm. and. Um, to be honest, it's been amazing. It's honestly been amazing. Like, I've changed more people's um, lives. I, I would say life, hopefully. Uh, clients. <laughs> <laughs> you say our life has changed. Uh, physically, I, at least. Uh, physically, yeah. at least. Yeah. Um, a lot more than I when I was in Big Boss Gym handling like 20, 30 clients in my pocket in, uh, per month. Hmm. So, um, I have a lot more, um, there's a lot more focus towards uh, clients and it's been a real fulfilling journey. Mm. Being able to help shape someone's life. To shape mm-hmm. someone's life and things like that. So I was mentioning like people who has been decades, few hundred kilos and yeah. all these, right? Imagine dropping them 30 kilos down, mm. 20, 20, 30% body fat down from 40, 50%. Right. And getting them to a healthy body weight. And you know that they're going to live a longer life, man. Yeah. yeah in, in that kind of sense, you know, like... It's a huge achievement, bro. It's a huge achievement. Yeah. Uh, the way I see, like, a lot of uh, my clients having all this kind of determination is actually super, super, super fulfilling. Yeah. And I, I bet you feed off their motivation as well, right? You yeah. For sure, man. <coughs> Every time, like, um, someone texts me, like, oh, thank you for all this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> yesterday also, I got a text where one of my clients dropped about um, 8 kilos... So she's quite small. Okay. Um, she dropped about like ten percent body fat kind of thing. Wow. Okay. And it's been decades, man, since they're able to change. And like for their culture, um, Indian culture is even tougher because you know you have your staple diet of roti prata and stuff like that to change a, a few things here and there. Yeah. To make sure that it's sustainable for the rest of life. You know, like you have changed that person's life. Yeah, most definitely. Mm. Yeah. And for you, Kaitan, how about you? Yeah, definitely. I think. During my days when I started out as a personal trainer, I didn't have a lot of knowledge, right? Because you can, you know, just uh, basically listen to what other people say about all the <laughs> bro science kind of stuff where you have to eat eggs raw and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it, it's when uh, you really, when you teach people, you actually learn as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> you know, some, some clients like ask really difficult questions mm. and then me as a trainer, I'm also curious of that question, which I, d- I do not know, have the answer for, right? Yeah. So I go and read, read up on the research articles and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, oh, you know, actually, uh, you know, eggs is, is not bad for you. <laughs> like egg, egg yolk, right? We've mm. say in the past, egg yolk is bad for you and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. Is that true? No. <laughs> it depends though. It depends. For it, yeah. diabetic. Okay. Diabetic clients. If I'm not wrong in terms of the research people, I got to research that up again. But then... Um, for general people. No. For general people, egg yolks is really good because um, vitamin D, okay. you can only absorb a small certain amount only from the sun, although we are in a sunny country, <laughs> right? Yeah. But most of the vitamin D is the one that actually gives you energy. Sometimes people feel really lethargic is because they are uh, deficient in vitamin D. Mm. And you can always get it from your egg yolks. And that's the easiest and, source. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, people think that or you, you get cholesterol, a lot of cholesterol yeah, when yeah, you eat yeah. eggs, right? Yeah. I was going to ask about that. So there's actually, you know, different kind of cholesterol. There's your high-density lipoprotein and your low-density lipoprotein, okay. like cholesterol, right? Hmm. So uh, to put it in simpler terms, there's the good one and the bad one. Okay. <laughs> so the egg has the good one. Wait, this one, egg is uh, the raw one, right? Like you crack... No, no, we're not talking about eating raw, but just the eggs in general. Eggs in general. <laughs> is there a difference though between eating it raw and cooked and stuff like that? I, I would say the, the stench is, is different. <laughs> <laughs> but in general wise, you know, it's still, there's still the, the protein content and everything still the same. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, just get a pasteurized one uh, in case you get salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So it's the good cholesterol that mm. helps to clear out the bad cholesterol, mm. right? Uh, that the egg has. Okay. So it's a misconception, uh, mm. basically. Oh, that's very interesting, yeah. I know egg is one of the big big things, like, yeah, especially I have uh, the older people telling me, like, hey, I cannot eat too much egg yolks because too high cholesterol. So I don't know. I mean, you guys would know better to advise, right? Yeah. Mm. For old people, is it okay to eat egg yolks? 
Okay, so it really depends. Um, does your old people have uh, cardiovascular diseases? All these kind of things all got to put into factor. Okay. Um, okay, the good thing about high density um, lipo... Lipoprotein. Lipoprotein, right? So um, that's inside that's your egg yolks. Technical as shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your good cholesterol will actually lower down your um, bad cholesterol. Okay. In a sense. So... If you actually eat those kind of good cholesterol, they are high, um, higher density, uh, it helps to actually clear up your blood vessels okay. as compared to the low density one. The low density ones is the one that gets stuck because your blood couldn't sort of wash away. Flush it out. <laughs> yes. Ah, okay. So the thicker ones will help to actually push it all out mm. into the bloodstream away. Right. Yeah, so in, uh, I'll put it into the most lame term as possible. Uh, if you can actually picture it. <laughs> good and bad. Yeah, so good and bad, there's a lot of things. But the, the reason why most people really have a lot of cholesterol problems is uh, is because they eat a lot of trans fat. Trans fat like oil? Uh, yeah. Depends what kind of oil. But basically, proce- basically process. <laughs> I forgot the mic here. <laughs> <laughs> basically like process uh, fat through okay. chemical changes. Mm. Yeah, like... It comes from uh, a lot of processed food as well. Mm. 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 Mostly so, processed food. Oh, sorry. No, no. Mostly processed food has <laughs> the trans fat that. Um, that's the biggest reason why people get cholesterol, aside from uh, genetic reasons. Okay. Mm-hmm. In those drinks, are there any trans fat things? I don't know. I mean, I'm just wondering. Let me man. see the macros, yeah. <laughs> Real quick. Oh, well, there, there's zero trans fat for my. How about yours? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, zero. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's thirty five percent less sugar also. <laughs> My ass four grams of protein. <laughs> oh, that's why you take soya bean, right? <laughs> you don't lose his gains. <laughs> gains, bro, gains. Okay, okay, so okay. Based just on this conversation, it sounds like the way you guys approach fitness is that you guys go through a lot of uh, science research. Yes. Right. Like um, we go we go into real participants in a lab kind of thing where they are mm. actually. Um, monitor like whether your keto diet is way better than your high carbohydrate diet. Okay. Um, whether eating at night is better than eating in the morning. Right. Whether eating three times a day is better than eating five times a day. All this kind of stuff we actually went and re really dive deep into it so mm. that we understand um, how we can actually replicate and help our clients. Right. So whether ten reps is better than twenty reps or even one minute rest is better than three minute rest. So it like. For us, mm. we are nerds that we really love to go super technical into it. Right. Yeah, but we don't really own a lab. We just read like, <laughs> the research articles, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but, <clears throat> so how, tell us the process. Like, when you meet a client the first day, do you straight away, like, tell, ask them these, quest- these sets of questions, like, how many meals a day do you have? Uh, keto diet? What was the process like for you guys? Okay, so for my side, right, um, we sit down on the table of consul- consultation. Mm-hmm. So the most important thing is that we need to understand their lifestyle habits. Right. And their lifestyle habits are usually the hardest to change first. Yeah. And uh, we got to understand their dietary habits. So they got to write for us down whatever that they eat for the past week or at least wow. for three days. Okay. And then we calculate um, every single food calories inside. And then we calculate how much their total daily energy expenditure, which is how much they burn in a day. Right. And then uh, we try to match the numbers up. So if we match the numbers up and if the numbers do not make sense, then most likely the client is lying. Ah. But if not, then we can really see the numbers are higher than what they actually burn. Then we know how to actually uh, substitute a few things for them. Mm. So um, we also got to understand their psychology. Yep. Um, whether they eat one meal a day, sometimes people can actually overeat even with one meal a day um, okay. versus three meals a day. Amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, so um, from there, we can really advise on how to actually fit everything into their lifestyle. Mm. Mm. So the first thing about losing weight is never about exercise. Okay, please share more. <laughs> Enlighten me, man. That's, that's, I think most people have this like question, right? <laughs> so, the thing about losing weight is that I, I guarantee you, if you actually eat under your calories, even with junk food as well, mm-hmm. um, you will lose weight. But the thing is that you need to accurately find um, what is your energy expenditure and just eat below it. Okay. So, one kilogram is about 7,500 calories. Kilogram, okay. 
So your um, chicken rice has about 600 calories. So if you... You gotta you can you gotta play it up with the numbers and then right. you will realize like how much kilos you really got dropped to get your desirable weight. Mm. So weight wise doesn't also reflect on body composition. Body composition that means your body fat versus uh, your muscle mass. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So um yeah that's that's uh I mean I I try not to go too technical unless you really want me to go technical. <laughs> I'm fine as well. Uh, I would love to talk about this all day. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> no, but please yeah yeah. What's so the it's. The most, the most, most important thing is nutrition. Mm. Most people subconsciously eat more than they burn. Right. Yeah. And if you eat out, right, most likely the meal has more than 1,000 calories. Uh, in one meal? In one meal. So if Whoa. you eat out on a fancy restaurant and all these kind of things, yeah. um, your, your, your calories for that meal could be 1,000. If you drink or you eat a bit of snacks and appetizers, it's easily about 1,005 to 2,000. Mm. Ooh. And your general average population um, energy expenditure is about one thousand six to about two thousand three around there. Okay. And and a lot of people didn't don't realize like the sweet drinks you drink has a, basically <laughs> a lot of calories in it. Let's see how much this one has, right? This one has. Oh, this is not so bad. This is ninety eight. Yeah. Ninety-eight some calories? some has two two hundred. You know, two hundred oh. calories in just one deadly packet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. So, okay, for somebody who is going uh, just on a day-to-day basis who doesn't have any personal trainers or anything, ideally, how do they start losing weight? Okay. Um, first thing is to watch your diet. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's one research that um, I could actually pop it up also if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, start doing small exercises. And here's where the exercise come in to actually be healthy part and okay. it might help you to actually lose weight hmm. because they have done a research where people who don't exercise at all yep. has a very skewed sense of um, appetite appetite so um, exercise is actually an appetite regulator those people who exercise at least once or twice mm-hmm. have their hunger level control as compared to people who don't exercise at all really yes but if you exercise six times a day then of course you eat more but then of yeah. course you won't get as worse <laughs> as not exercising at all so starting your exercise, if we don't know how to calculate your calories and all these <laughs> kind of things, you know, like it could be super sciencey and then for the layman people, it could be very hard, right? Yeah. The most important thing is just do an activity that you can enjoy and hopefully, hopefully your appetite will regulate itself. If not, then um, reevaluate and think about the diet that you're eating, maybe switch to healthier meals. Hmm. Okay. Kajan, hmm. what's the, when Jazli was mentioning exercising, right? What do you define as exercise? So exercise can basically be any form. <clears throat> so it can be uh, like doing a sport you like, yeah. or it can be you know anything that uh, just get you moving. Maybe even walking can be an exercise. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask because so like people in the office who work uh, nine to five jobs, right? Is walking to and fro from work to home traveling is that considered exercise? Well, so it it depends on uh, the distance you walk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's say maybe you walk like ten km versus you walk. No, 1km, yeah. definitely 10km will help you burn more calories right. than, than a 1km walk. Mm. Yeah. So a good, good way to uh, define exercise, right? I, I wouldn't say, you know, you have to really do really strenuous, uh, especially for, you know, uh, people who haven't exercised for a long time. Right. Maybe you can take like small steps, mm. you know, maybe it could be as simple as, uh, you know, in- increasing your step count on right. a daily basis and then, you know, moving on to like uh, something more advanced maybe taking the stairs will be more advanced right taking yes. then the, the lifts <laughs> or the escalator yeah and then you know slowly progress from there mm. and then just get yourself more active and maybe yeah. in the future uh join a, a spot that you like or you know go to the gym or something like that yeah, yeah. so it's baby steps basically progression yeah. progression <clears throat> okay so in a way as long as you're expanding your energy during the day then after that that's when uh, you have more or less a control over your diet. Is that what? Okay, is? so um, doing a activity could um, in terms of exercise, right? Mm. Where I feel um, it has to be intentional. So oh. anything that um, is not intentional, like let's say you do a long walk and all this kind of stuff, like um, you walk instead of taking the bus and stuff, right? Mm. It will be a multiplier towards how much you burn per day. So like it will be a times 1.2 or 1.3 of your daily burn. Right. But then um, and 
uh, a exercise could be a more intentional thing like okay today I am going for a walk you know like you have mm. the intention thought of your mind yeah. uh, I'm going to walk up hill I'm going to cycle or I'm going to go for a swim and then um, that will be actively trying to do something about your health right mm. so <clears throat> Any kind of intention, basically, like even so. What if I set an intention, like I'm gonna walk from here to work? Is the a... then I think it also is an exercise. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because you are intentionally trying to do a physical activity. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. So the eventually, like yeah, Kaitan mentioned, it's about progression to something more rigorous, something that gets your heartbeat up, right? Mm. That's when. So which part At what point Are you able to actually Control your diet though? Actually at any point You can control your diet <laughs> it's, it's whether you know You want to do it Or you don't want to do it Yeah, yeah. basically So I, I would say You know People think exercising Is the hardest part But you know After experiencing uh, de- Being deprived of food I think you know <laughs> Dieting is definitely The hardest Yeah right. So uh, You know you, you, can, you can't out Burn uh the the food you consume. Right. Let's say you know if I eat additional, uh, one one thousand calories mm-hmm. for my daily intake, right? I I have to, so I I have to run maybe you know, two point four under ten minutes. That's only two hundred calories. So I have to run five times oh. of that to burn away the one thousand yeah. calories. Yeah. <laughs> And Damn. that's that's I don't think yeah that's <laughs> normal. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not normal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm, interesting. So there's a lot of factors that goes into some helping somebody lose weight. Mm. What would you guys say is the most important? Diet. Yeah. Still diet. Diet. A- a- adherence actually. Adherence. So to be able to sustain to your you know your exercise program or your dieting program mm-hmm. to keep. You know, I can give you the most optimal program to do, right? But if you don't follow it, it's not going to mm. change or help you in any way. Right. Yeah. So pick something that you can do and not like something where uh, the, the best bodybuilder or the, you know, the <laughs> best whoever, do, uh, Lance Armstrong or something like that, right? Yeah. Do, right? So something that you can adhere to, to keep it consistent, to actually, you know, to be able to change your whole lifestyle and behavior as general. Mm. Mm. I think that comes with clients as well. Because sometimes we get people who say, hey, I want to work out five times a, uh, a week yeah. right. or six times a week or seven times a week. <laughs> and usually when it comes to that case, right, the the potential clients or the clients that over, always overpromise, right, mm. always never follow up with okay. that. So that's why we say, okay, um, I don't care whether you want to do five times a week, that's a bonus. Mm. But I'm just going to give you a target of two times intentional workout. And then usually they hit it. But mm. the last time that I planned for people like six times a week, <laughs> most likely they will never follow, you know? Right. Like there's so many times that we try that kind yeah. of thing. I don't even train six times a week. <laughs> yeah, like people tend to overpromise, right. um, especially the more goal-oriented people. Mm. Um, they want to see fast results. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that you couldn't get fast results even working one, exercising one time or two times a week. Uh. Right. But then the most important thing is just to keep it consistent and mm. hit accordingly all the way. Okay, and so this uh, so it depends also on the the, the client's uh, preference. Like, are they going for a healthy lifestyle, or is it more like if, say, for example, you're going for a competition, then that's more like a short term goal. Yeah. So, so you guys have to customize what they are looking for based on their goal. We have to understand the client psychology. So, like mm. for some clients, if let's say losing weight is very fast, right? Mm. Then we have a, uh, like for example, um, is as equivalent as taking their lunch away. Uh, you know, like you eat your <laughs> breakfast and dinner kind of thing. Yeah. But then if they see it very fast and they feel really motivated along the journey to keep on losing one kilo, 0.5 kilo. I mean, if two kilo is a bit nonsense, uh, but <laughs> one kilo a week and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. um, then I guess in a way, go ahead because mm. you are going for a healthy lifestyle. Mm. But um, if you're doing something that people really dislike and they cannot bear with it, right? Mm. Then most likely they won't follow up. Yeah. Mm. Fair enough, fair enough, yeah. So, so, so the same thing for me as well. I mean, for the longest time, uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you were a fat kid. I was a fat kid as well. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so I found it a struggle. I did play sports and all that, but I also found it a struggle. Like Especially, I think it was about six, 18 years old. I signed up for the gym. I went on for about three to five months on a consistent uh, routine. And then I dropped off. 
And then after that, to get started again was a bit tough for me. And then after that, when I did get started, you go on, you would go on for about another three months, five months, and then die off again. For people like me, right, who go through that kind of thing, what would your advice be? Okay. Hmm. You want me to answer or you want to answer? I, I would say, you know, we have to really dive in depth of your lifestyle first. Yeah, right. basically. Uh, so we have to... Is it normal though? So that's also another question I have to ask. Like, is it normal for there to be an inconsistency? It's very normal for your weight or your body composition to fluctuate Change, within yeah. your whole entire life. Yeah. Because life happens, you know. <laughs> like, like suddenly, um, you're working out so hard, then after that, boom, COVID. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Can like, anything, right? If whatever you enjoy is inside a swimming pool that makes you really <laughs> physically active and you cannot, you really dislike running hmm. under the hot sun or even at night and things like that, then you have a total change to your routines. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. for example, if you lose a job or you get a new job that requires you to work um, eight to eight kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you get these uh, executive people who's really busy on the fly, almost receiving emails every time. Yeah. How, the thing, the most important thing is that um, first thing first is be aware of what you actually really want okay. and whether um, your goals are realistic towards your lifestyle mm-hmm. and then um, whether you're determined enough to actually reach it. Mm. Mm. So at the core of it is all about what's your, whether you're determined or not to reach it. Right? In a way, right? Like is your fitness goal more important than your job? Kind of thing. Uh. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> is your fitness goal more important than never eating pizza in your life? Never Ooh. tasting pizza in your life? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would say like, you know, it's not that you can't eat pizza. It's just that you have to control the portion right. where you consume. You know, instead of the, maybe the whole pizza, maybe kind of a, a bit. Mm. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, it's about the lifestyle. There's no such thing as, you know, good food or bad food. Hmm. There's only uh, food that has more nutrients versus food that has lesser nutrients but more calories. Hmm. Yeah. So you have to play around to get the best of both worlds. Right. Both world. Yeah. Pardon my English. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you realize sometimes the most fittest people like really don't have a life. Hmm. Because they don't even go out with friends. They never Mostly. like uh they just woke up, they don't even dare to go to a bar to a drink to have a drink. Mm. Or even like uh like go out on an outing like Pizza Hut, hey, you wanna go Pizza Hut today? It's like, no, I'm on my diet, you know that yeah, kind my, of thing. Day. My, my <laughs> chicken, <laughs> chicken breast and broccoli diet. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see these people really, really often. And then that's how determined they are for their goal. Uh, and mm. that's you. Do do you? Uh. Right. Mm. As long as you keep your body fat percentage in a healthy zone. Hmm. Not your weight, your healthy uh, body fat percentage so that you don't get cardiovascular diseases. Okay. You have a regular small regime of cardio mm-hmm. and um, you do a little bit of strength training so that um, you fall off the bathroom then you won't get injured and break your <laughs> leg, right? right? So things like that, mm. these three are the most important factors. Ah, mm. okay, okay. Wow, man, we went deep and we went... <coughs> Great <laughs> advisors, man. Yes, yes. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh... How was it like for you though, Kaiten? You, you went into, what was it? What was the competition name uh, again? WNBF, the WNBF. World Natural Bodybuilding World Federation. World Natural Bodybuilding Federation. Federation, just, just, WNBF, yeah. 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 <coughs> How was it like to diet then? Because we just talked about dieting, then it's about all proportionate. Mm-hmm. If you had to go down to, what was it, 6%? Yeah, 6%. It was. What was the diet like, man? <laughs> so, so, in the beginning, I, when I started my diet, right, I was at 77 ki- kilo. Yeah. And I dropped like all the way to like maybe 62 kilo mm. yeah that was way way like so i luckily i didn't i didn't rush it i had like six months to mm. you know prepare okay. to actually for my cutting phase yeah so i would say initially there wasn't much difference because mm. people think like you know uh magically after you start dieting for a day you you become wigs all of a sudden and like you know <laughs> people take the kryptonite and like <laughs> stick it in your body but that's not the case yeah so mm. uh i think it only comes after a few months maybe three months yeah when you're really depleted of energy because you know the human body uh is actually really smart you actually you know you need food to survive right yeah so if actually you control the amount of food where you want to eat uh where you're body fat starts to get like dangerously low i would mm-hmm. say maybe single digit would be uh re- quite low yeah for okay. most people yeah so once during my single digit body fat percentage i was trying all the cheat 
<laughs> cheat sheets to get my um set my hunger level in control okay. to get more saturated, uh-huh. basically uh more full. Yeah, so I even tried like zero calories, jelly, you know, uh Coke Zero. Yeah, and, Coke Zero, does that help though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, okay. it basically has zero calories. Oh, yeah. Okay. But you know, it has caffeine. So if you take too much of it, you probably can't like hmm. sleep at night and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. Do you get insomnia? <laughs> Not really, yeah, because I, I, I have like maybe one, just one bottle a day. Uh, yeah. uh, and not too bad. <laughs> yeah, f- fiber, basically fiber helps you to uh, keep yourself bloated as well. Hmm. Yeah, but too much fiber could be a bad thing also. Yeah. yeah. It's always in balance. Uh, yeah, basically. it's a balance. Mm. Yeah, so I was super, you know, tired all the time. I think he, he noticed <laughs> the... When when I when I come to the come to work right, it's like oh, like a zombie. No, he's, he's like a robot zombie. Right? Like, it's a drag, bro- the way he walks, uh, it's yeah. like a very, very similar motion all the way. Uh. Yeah. Eh? you were mentioning like uh, you almost fainted or something, right? Yeah. So it's like you know you just feel very lethargic all the time mm. uh, when you're in a very dangerously low percent of body fat. Right. Yeah. So it's like let's say even when I'm moving like when I. S- squat down and guide my client and then Sunny I stand up I'm like oh the blood rush yeah, yeah. so I f- Sunny like feel dizzy and stuff like that mm. <laughs> it must yeah. have been a real struggle uh, to, be, yeah, to yeah. have to deal with that to train people and especially when my I have stronger clients right, who take heavier weights yeah. and, you know I would, I would just like help them load the weights into the bar I just feel tired from loading <laughs> the weights you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the end of the day it was worth it in a sense uh, because you yeah. managed to achieve your goal I managed to uh, yeah achieve a reasonably good Body percent fat and have a uh, six pack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Hashtag jealous, but okay. <laughs> but I, I don't have it now. <laughs> I see, I see. And how is that in comparison to you, Jazli? For you, you do power lifting, right? Yeah. So dietary wise, how is it? How is it different? <laughs> okay, so because uh, you mentioned no diets for <laughs> For my first, <laughs> I think you, you saw. Okay, so my psychology. Uh, my psychology for powerlifting is very, very different. Although, there's a lot more optimal way to actually hit it. Okay. The most important thing is that I want to be happy when I'm lifting weights. Uh. <laughs> so, <enough>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, as long as my weight do not fly up above my weight class, right. mm. and I keep it under control, the, the weight class that I want to compete in, right. then um, I'm fine. Uh. Mm. So, I could take, like, five-minute break between my exercises, just eat a bar of chocolate and go back <laughs> in. You know that kind of thing? Yeah. So, um, these kind of things makes you feel positive in mm. a way and then uh, helps you to go back into it again. Right. But of course, um, in terms of lifting heavy all the time, you have that amount of uh, crazy fatigue. Uh, like your whole body mm. couldn't even lift any more weights or anything like that. Like even um, doing stuff, I think there was one time that uh, I was training and I fainted as well. Wow. Because um, the, the blood rush, uh, the blood rush <laughs> to my head and then um, I was very near the peak state of carrying real heavy already. Um, I didn't go to my one max rep, uh, but it's just hitting the, the, the amount of reps itself. Right. And uh, I was forcing... Okay, in terms of planning wise, I am overloading way too much as well. I mean, it's a learning mistake for my first meet. Okay. So, uh, I guess the only thing that keeps me happy is food. <laughs> <laughs> no. Talking about food, right? I've, I've seen like powerlifters who, you know, eat pizza in between their sets, you know. They do one set of deadlift and then they go to the, uh, they bought pizza and they go over to the table and just like eat a few pizza. Yeah. And, a few bite, and they go back, do one more set. You know? if, if, if you're a national or world level competitor, right? Uh, competition, right? Then I, I really don't advise it uh, because you, you, you are going to fill up your mess with um, a lot of um, pizzas. <laughs> a lot of pizzas <laughs> and there's a lot more room for you to actually gain a bit more uh, muscle hypertrophy that might help for uh, your lifting hypertrophy that means muscle gain for lifting uh, okay. and eating that amount of pizza doesn't exactly <laughs> help you to gain that right. muscle uh, rather than um, mm. fat rather than fat but then as, um, as, but if it's on your first meet then I think it's more important that your mental state goes um, right rather than um, hitting it yeah Fair enough, fair enough. And one question that I always had in mind about deadlift, uh, is it true that the bigger the person is, the stronger they are? Well, it, it works in a correlation, but it's not the causation. 
Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> technically, I mean, if I if I go look at YouTube right, where the world's strongest mm. man competition, right? You got uh, what's the guy? Half tall Beyonce. Half tall Beyonce, yeah. yeah, and all these. Eddie so Hall. they are huge, man. Does that necessarily mean that they are the strongest people? Or? They are strongest in the absolute weight, so they can carry four hundred kilo. Yeah. But then they could be two hundred kilo, so that's just two times their body weight. Uh, but you want to see how strong somebody is? Mm-hmm. It has to be a multiplier of their body weight. So people mm. carry two times their body weight, three times their body weight, or four times their body mm. weight. Sometimes we see uh, this kind of people over online or even in real person, and it's like right. crazy, man. So okay. Yeah. So I think right. Uh, basically, you have to, you know, take into consideration, not it, size does help to a certain point because more, uh, cross muscle section, right? Basically, you know, more muscle size equals cross muscle section. Okay. okay it's, it's more of the <laughs> scientific stuff, but yeah, it helps you. T- to a certain extent, but mostly is uh on how much you can, fi- how many muscle fibers you can fire up. Okay. So you can you have seen like really skinny powerlifters lifting like mm. maybe way heavier with like maybe 200, 300 <clears throat> kilos. Yeah. Okay. So they don't exactly have huge muscles, but uh, it's that just that they've been training so much in the specific movement mm. so that they can fire up more muscle fibers to actually help them lift the weight ah, up. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes having a tummy also supports you in yeah. your sports. More cross- because, your, because of your whole mechanics and how your center of gravity changes, right? Uh-huh. It could really support you from your sports. <laughs> that, that kind of thing, you know, like you really have, um, just by packing up size, uh, your whole mechanics change. Your deadlift stance change. Mm. The way that you lift maybe is a bit forward or a bit backwards all change. Yeah. yeah. So I was wondering, like, how come some of the world's strongest men they look fat as hell, man, but they're still super <laughs> strong, right? Yeah. Like some of them like legit have like a, what I would deem a beer belly or something, mm. but they're still able to lift up like cars, huge stunts. Eh? Yeah, move the cars, pull the cars, and all that. They so, they are strong in a sense, but of course that's not exactly the definition of mm. fitness, you know. Yeah. Because um at the end of the day, I mean not to disrespect because I really respect um yeah. people who really train hard for strongest men is to actually get your body fat percentage on a healthy level. That's the most important thing. Okay. Doesn't matter how heavy you are. Mm, mm. Okay. Awesome, man. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Fantastic content. Okay, guys. So, right now, we're going to have a short session about uh, myths about fitness that whether, uh, whether it can be debunked or not. Okay? Mm, right. So, I'm just going to run through a couple of uh, myths <clears throat> about fitness and then you guys can let me know your perception of it so that, you know, maybe the viewers and the streamers also can have a better understanding can. of these myths. Shoot. Right? Wait. All right. So the first one is, working out on an empty stomach helps you lose weight. You answer or answer? <laughs> Anything, man. Scissors, paper, stone. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> so the winner answer is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I I heard a lot of people do this so-called fasted cardio thing on, uh, you know, especially when they are in the competition, right? Right to so-called burn more calories, right? Mm. But, you know, uh, I, w- I would say it, it, it don't really help you. Maybe uh, you actually need basically some form of energy to help you. Co- you need to consume some form of energy to actually uh, help you in your cardio. Right. Yeah, because if you are, let's say, more depleted mm. v- versus when you are actually, you know, you have a little form of energy yeah. for consumption, you'll be able to perform better in your cardio. Okay. And compared to when you don't have so much uh, food. Yeah. Right, yeah. And also, basically, you know, you won't, you won't, you won't basically feel sucky all the time, you know. When you do the cardio itself, you won't feel sucky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel that sometimes, like, you know, when I wake, uh, sometimes I, I used to go into the routine of waking up at 6 a.m. and then exercising about 6.30. Right. So, I feel like on some days I have the energy, on some days I just don't have the energy. And then my workout routine also is like cut short halfway and stuff. Mm. Is that due to not having enough intake before that? Oh, Pro- there's a lot of factors. Man. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. That, <laughs> sleep. That can be probably one of the factors, yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, like what you mentioned, sleep, maybe even hydration level and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. But I think basically, you know, people think that you uh, have this uh, afterburn Right, when you do cardio uh, with an empty stomach. Mm. Uh, is it? Is that is, uh, no, you will burn more. The afterburn one comes for high intensity interval training. Or oh, high intensity interval. So that's not what most people think. I, I don't know whether they think that fasted cardio uh, have the afterburn, uh, but then I do know about the myth that um, they mention. What is it? They mentioned that fasted cardio will burn more calories. Uh. Okay. 
Yeah. Do you have any idea like why people, you know, think that? I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, right, the thing is that if you eat and do cardio at the same time, mm-hmm. you might actually burn more calories than you're in your empty stomach. Really? And the reason why is that if you're energy depleted, right, most likely you will skim through a lot of exercise. Mm. And then mm. if you're performing less, um, uh, worse, right, then maybe you feel much more lethargic. Then right. you try, your body will go subconsciously to actually um, conserve the energy. So maybe you swing your arms less during the run. Mm. And if you swing your arms more during the run when you actually have a better stomach, right, yeah. then you will for sure burn more calories. Right. So that is a myth. Okay. Mm. Love it. Okay, nice. Mm. Uh, okay, second one. Lifting heavy weights makes you bulk up. Lifting heavy weights makes you bulk up. True? Uh, <laughs> we talk about uh, That's volume and intensity. Yeah. Talk about volume and intensity. <laughs> <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so is there going to be a scientific... Uh, I scientific can see what you guys are yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you want to go, go ahead with the... Okay, so in order for you to grow muscles, right, is mm-hmm. that you have to have an increase in volume. Right. Um, I tend to, to explain what is volume. First. Okay, so volume, right, <laughs> is let's say you are doing a bicep curl, 10 kilos, 3 sets, 3 reps. Uh, 10 kilos, sorry, 10 kilos, 10 reps, 3 sets. That's equal to 300 when you times all together. Right. So in order for you to grow, then you have to have a 320, 350, 400. Then uh, that, you, that is how you grow. As long as the reps doesn't go way above 12 reps or 15 reps, something like that. Okay. So uh, that's how you actually grow. Um, but... If you are lifting heavy, um, instead you are doing, that's not 300 kilos, right? Right. But you're doing a 50 kilo bicep curl mm-hmm. for three, uh, uh, one rep, three do. set, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <here. laughs> so that is equal to 150. Okay. And that would not be the factor of muscle growth at all. So li- that is lifting heavy weights. Right. Doesn't mean, uh, doesn't mean that you lift 50 kilo for one rep for three set will make you grow more than 10 kilo, 10 rep, three set. Hmm. The factor is always, almost always volume. Ah, okay. So it's a case of volume rather than the, what was it? The weight, right? Yes. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I nicely explained. I think I got it. I think the streamers and viewers probably got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up, um, <clears throat> muscle weighs more than fat. Answer. It's, it's okay. It's more dense than fat, but I wouldn't say it weighs more, more than fat. Okay. So let's say maybe I take one kilo of you know maybe uh cotton versus one kilo of maybe uh, some super so- dense metal. Mm-hmm. It's still gonna weigh the same, right? Yeah, it's still gonna weigh one kilo <laughs> in general. Just that it's more dense, you know. Mm. Uh, maybe you, you might if someone has more fat, maybe he appears more bulky. Uh, compared to someone that is has more uh, muscle mass in with in the same weight. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. You see 70 kilo fat people and 70 kilo um high fat percentage, uh, mm. and 70 kilo muscle people, um they will look really, really dense. Okay. Mm. So there's a big difference. Uh. You can see in their physique. Yeah, mm. yeah that's true. Okay, nice. Uh next one. Crunches are key to flat abs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have much abs now. Just maybe a little bit. But yeah. I, I would say, you know, everyone have abs. If, if you put it in this uh, term, right? Because we all understand the anatomy. Everyone has abs to basically just to get out from bed. From the bed, you have to have abs. Ab, abs muscle. Okay. So it's just the layer of uh, the fats. Covering that, it. Yeah. So oh. basically, you just have to, you want abs, you have to just go on a lower body percent fat. Yeah. Okay. You know, doing crunches, I think it's, it helps to build muscle, but, you know, it doesn't help to lose fat. Yeah. So basically, dieting is the one that helps you, the energy balance between the energy in and energy out. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay. Good insight, man. <laughs> okay. Next one. Squats. That lifter squats <laughs> will make your butt big. Uh, okay, so there's a lot more better ways to make your butt big than a squat, la. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's true. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, because when you do a squat, right? Uh, most people' mechanics is that they break at the knees, so it's more quad dominant than 
quad quadriceps that means your your front thigh mm. rather than uh your glutes. Okay. So um when you do squats, it does work on your glutes and your glutes will also tend to grow accordingly to your quads, but your quads will grow more. Right. So um but in terms of the normal body mechanics itself, I think everyone should actually do squats because of the hip hinge and how um, you want to be functional in your life. Mm. You don't want to grow like old and not even be able to squat and touch something, you know? Right, right. So, um, but then answering back to the question, yeah, if you want to grow a big butt, just add squat to your routine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. <clears throat> this one is, uh, I don't mind if I go a bit deeper into these squats. Eh? Yeah. Because I face an issue where I can't squat. Okay. So how do, I can literally show you like, for me when I squat right, this is if I maintain this posture, this is as low as I can go, with a straight back. So how do I perform squats, like literally like this as low as I can go? What if you have a bend back? Uh, bend back there I can go lower. Yeah. So this is as low as. Are I can you go. able to squat shit, um, stunts? What's that? Like like. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking that? about using the toilet in a <laughs> yeah, squat yeah. position uh, versus I, a. I don't do squats in the toilet anymore. I mean, <laughs> what happens if you squat low, you'll fall down? Uh, when I squat low, I have to tiptoe. Ah, yeah. I understand. So there mobility. seems to be something, I don't know, hindering my, my the flexibility of my squats. So how does that... Is there a, Okay. Mm. In terms of squats, uh, I teach it to almost every client as long as they don't have a knee injury. Right. Um, the thing about squats is that sometimes, I think most likely you do not have the strength to actually hold into that position. Um, in terms of your range of motion, right? Let's say your bicep curl and stuff like that, yeah. right? If you've always been sitting down on chair, um, then you will only have a strength of this, this uh, range, range of motion. Mm. But having this range of motion is, that, is something regular that you actually need to do uh, but then if you have never um been able to control your body weight at that range of motion then most likely um you get a little bit more weaker la, on mm. that sense so um i mean there's a lot more things to factor in of course with um tight hamstrings and, yeah. and of <laughs> course uh ankles ankle um ankle pro- <laughs> what is it called ankle plantar uh, f- yeah. plantar flexion plantar flexion, flexion. <laughs> Some, flexion is, like is t- 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 what was the t- opposite Ex- okay. Extend. So um, there's extend. another there's another uh, thing that like your calf is very very tight in mm. a way, um, and it's not used to that uh, motion. Right. So one way you could do it is just by doing resistance training. I mean, uh, one mm. way to actually start it safe as well for you not to fall is by doing a full range leg press. Mm. Leg press. A leg press. It's the one you. Yeah, the, you the machine. Yes. So make sure that you almost go all the way up and all the way down. Uh, and then that helps you to actually control your position at the bottom as right. well. So when you go down, so just control your. Um, your the your, movements. Uh, the, 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 the speed of how you actually um, go back into the original position. Uh, Things like that help. Then um, there's such thing as box squat. So your box can actually go lower also. So okay. first thing you can squat on a higher stool. Then you can go by two inches down, three inches down, four inches down. Then slowly you can, um, instead of just sitting down and standing up, you can just slightly touch. And all this kind of thing, eventually you get the strength to uh, move to that. Nice. I, I, I'm glad I did this podcast. Now I got personal <laughs> advice on this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. <laughs> okay, last but not least. You need at least 30 minutes to get a solid workout. Well, I, I would say, you know, a five minute workout would be better than no workout at all. Yeah. True. Very true. But if you want to, you know, hit uh, most of the movements of your body, uh, let's say your, like, for example, you know, the human movement, the horizontal push, the horizontal pull, hmm. the squat and stuff like that, you would definitely need maybe about I think 45 to an hour yeah to hit to hit the all the movements and hit all the maybe all the muscles yeah but in order to save time we can do more compound exercises which one exercise but hit a lot of movements and Mm. hit a lot of uh, muscle groups yeah muscle groups so it basically you know helps you shorten the time but I think you know 30 minutes workout it could be very good yeah you could even maybe 30 minutes in a day uh, if you have only 30 minutes free in a day, right? Mm. Then maybe you can split throughout the, the week 
you know, right. to have more frequency. Mm. Mm. Is that to do with, uh, <clears throat> I know now a very common thing is called the HIIT, high intensity interval trainings. Right. Is that one of the things where, you know, you go hard for 30 minutes and then it's good enough? <clears throat> okay. So, um, the first thing about your workout is that what's your objective? Mm. Um, you could do a 10 minute sprint. And that could be a really good workout because I okay. don't think you can sprint for 30 minutes. You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so if you want to sprint so that you can run faster, then that would be a good workout. Right. Um, if you want to swim, 10, 12 minutes, half an hour. I mean, it could be a good workout also. Like, I think... Um, yeah, it depends on really the objective. But at least I think 10 minutes would be a good um, set up time uh, if you are running hmm. but if you are doing resistance training then half an hour to one hour itself okay um, yeah a HIIT workout could even last about 10 minutes and it could be counted as good as well right mm. okay, so it really depends on your goal uh, the objective uh, that you want uh. yes correct <coughs> so people do circuit wise is because they want to hit a lot of muscle group and have that small bit of cardio as well right yeah so I think um, that could actually achieve both because you burn a lot of calories yeah. as long as your form is right then um, there's no form so Okay. Mm. Oh, wonderful, man. I think that about wraps up these uh, Mythbusters <laughs> <laughs> session. So thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah, I think uh, today we've more or less covered a lot. I think we've covered what Body Engineers is all about, what you both, uh, your backgrounds and why you're into this. We've also talked about quite a bit about dieting and uh, personal training for that matter. Mm. So thank you both for really coming on and sharing and opening up because I think the streamers and the viewers they have an idea of what personal training does and what fitness is all about. But you guys have gone in deep to share this information. So thank you so right. much. Th man. Thank you for having us, man. Hey, no problem, man. <laughs> thank it's you. a pleasure to have you guys. Really. <laughs> and you guys are great personalities. I, well. I always want to be on a podcast, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I virgin experience, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he was mentioning in, uh, during the COVID time, hey, Jess, you want to do a podcast or something? <laughs> <laughs> Dreams come true. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. You guys are a great, guy, uh, great guest. You guys have shared a lot. I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys want to mention anything to the to your to the viewers and streamers, so potential clients as well. Uh, you should first have your advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw you first. Okay, so I I would recommend you know the first thing in any workout is to make sure that you are able to you know follow your workout routine, follow your diet routine, and also have a healthier, balanced lifestyle between exercise and your diet and you know work. Yeah, so that's the most important thing. So uh, we all start somewhere, you know, you don't have to go to the gym and suddenly, you know, comp pick yourself against the biggest guy there and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, research wise, exercise is a good regulator, even though one exercise wise uh, is, a, is a good appetite regulator. So um, I guess just maybe do even one run a week and just start off is fine. It's, it's honestly good enough. Um, yeah. Fitness is not a one-time thing, it's a lifetime thing. And at the end of the day, you, don't want, um, you want to be independent for your whole entire life. So if you want a um, healthy, lifelong lifestyle, then work out until you're even 60, 70 years old. Yeah, consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Mm. Right. It's, it's a, a marathon, not a sprint. Hey, <laughs> nicely said. Right. All right, man. Thanks you guys. Thank you both really so much for this insightful podcast. I hope you guys, the videos and the streamers, video watchers and streamers uh, enjoyed this episode you guys learned a lot I hope you get inspired as well whether to be a personal trainer or whether to start working out in your lifestyle as well because I think as you as Dave mentioned it's really important to, to stay healthy and stay fit right so thank you guys once again bo both Just Lee and Kai Shen. Kai Kai Chen <laughs> right at the end right at the end <laughs> Kai Chen and Just Lee, thank you so much from Body Engineers thank you so much for being part of this podcast Thank you very much as well, Legacy Interiors, for lending us your office to shoot this podcast. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, thank you, Sophie. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, anything, last words? Uh, I think we mentioned yeah. our last words. If you guys yeah. want to check them out as well, links will be down in the description to contact them. Yeah. Yeah. You guys All want right. to promote any of your, you got any packages or anything? Uh... <laughs> All packages, just take a look over at Instagram. <laughs> but most importantly, most importantly, if you actually got any fitness question, uh, we'll nerd it out or we'll just shoot it down in the comments yeah. and we'll answer it. All right? Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Mic drop. Mic drop. All right. So with that, <laughs> that wraps up today's conversation. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next episode of the Deep Culture Podcast. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice day.